locate the foundation, we're going to start by building the outside perimeter of the floor frame. We'll move that frame into position, locate exactly where we want the shed, square it up. Once we establish where to dig the holes, we move the frame out of the way and start digging. We'll fully explain how to build the floor system in the next chapter, but for now all we need are 2x8s cut to the length and width of the shed. You can get this length from your plan. Lay the perimeter joists out on the ground, then nail them together with 12D or 16D galvanized fasteners or sinkers. Once nailed together, use the box to position your shed exactly where you want it in relation to the house in the yard. Cross measure to roughly square the box, then place the concrete blocks in the corners to establish the places to remove the grass. Before I remove the box, I check for level from corner to corner. This gives me a rough idea of how deep to dig for each block. It's pretty obvious by looking, that's the highest part of the, of the ground here, but we use the level of check to make sure that that's where we're going to start from. You don't want to start from the low part of the ground and try to work your way up because you'll find yourself digging very far down. So we work from the highest spot and do our layout from the highest spot down to the lower spots. That way it's a lot easier to add block than it is to dig out earth. Set the floor joist box aside and start digging. I like to use a helper with a shovel to do most of the digging. We're just going down below the topsoil. And if the topsoil is only four or five inches, that's all okay. we're going to go. The soil beneath the topsoil here is gravel and water travels right through it very easily so it, it doesn't it doesn't retain water. If it retained water and it froze, then it expands quite a bit. But seeing that it's a lot of gravel, the water goes right through it. Now you can either put a bunch of block there and build it up from there, but I find it's a little easier to grade it. Just using stone. And it gives us a little play left and right, back and forth when we put the frame back on to position it right where it needs to go. If the bottom of the block is above grade, add enough crushed stone around the edge to prevent the block from shifting over time. Any size crushed stone will work to support the blocks as long as it's well draining. Here I'm using a three quarter inch size. All right, now we're just gonna get a rough level. Again, we're starting with this side on the right. That's the highest point and just putting a, a straight edge from one to the next. Just let me level this up a little bit. Just put your weight, yeah, stomp on a little bit. You know, work around the perimeter from the highest block. Taking the time to ensure a level foundation saves a headache down the road trying to straighten things up. Measure that and we're either gonna add more stone or, add or we more. drop that down and put a second, second one on there. So we just pull a little stone out yeah. and put a second block there. Right. Perfect. Position the floor joist box on the blocks and square it to make any final adjustments you need. Let's not try to move the back blocks in place right. until we plywood it. Right. Then we can move it around, that way it'll stay. Because the whole thing is going to shuffle. Okay, that's good. You know what, that one we started with could go up. Remember to position the block faces flush with the floor perimeter. Perfect.